What's up everybody, welcome back to another episode of The Flop. Today, we're talking about practice. Do me a favor, if you find any value in this video, give us a like or comment down below. This really helps out the channel and also it's a great way for us to hear from you about what topics you'd like us to talk about in the future. Let's get into it. Everybody. Welcome to episode three of The Flop. Today we're going to be talking about practice. But first, before we talk about practice, um, we are really, really excited to introduce our new sponsor for the show, Triple Crown Cornhole. That's right, man. We've, uh, we've arrived. Three episodes in, we're sponsored. It's pretty cool. Um, and I couldn't be more <laughs> excited to be sponsored by Triple Crown. Um, I'm confident that anyone listening to this or watching this knows who triple crown is you've seen the triple crown logo on bags at your local draws or online on you know at tournaments and things like that um triple crown uh for those of you who don't know it's run by um a group of guys who are just amazing human beings just they do great things for the cornhole community and are literally the nicest guys in the world um, we're talking about uh, Mark Kruger. This is his baby. And we got Brian Shaw, which everybody knows Shaw. Uh, you've seen Purple Vipers. You know this man's been after him. So that's the guy. And then J.R. Hopper yeah, also. Yeah. And so these are just great individuals. Um, happy to know them and happy to uh, be able to be partnered with them. So uh, Triple Crown started about two years ago. I know it feels like they've been around a lot longer than that. But uh, two years ago... Uh, Mark, yeah, Mark does. came up with the idea of, you know, I mean, you've got, you know, the triple crown in horse racing where, you know, a, a horse wins three major events and uh, is honored with the triple crown title. So he was like, why not in cornhole? So if you win, if you go to one of their events, uh, they have two that they do at, um, at casinos. And, uh, and if you win the big blind draw, you win singles and you win doubles, you take the triple crown purse which is an added bonus on top of winning each event and also uh, get a, a triple crown ring, which is pretty cool. I mean, it's a legit ring, like a Super Bowl style ring. So it's pretty amazing. Um, their next event is actually going to be in Grand Falls, uh, Iowa, January 21st through 23rd. So if you um, want to check out one of their events and see what it's all about and uh, you think maybe you have what it takes to uh, win the triple crown, I know that I don't have what it takes to win the triple crown, but if you think you do, head up there and check it out and uh, tell them I said hello. Thanks. So thanks for sponsoring us, guys. We appreciate it. Heck yeah, guys. Thank you so much for, for believing in us and, and seeing our show and and um, just thinking of us and, and including us in, in your journey to do big things. So we really appreciate that. We do. Okay. Today we're talking about Wait practice. A minute. We're not. We're talking about practice. We're not talking about, we're not we're talking not about, talking the, game. about the game. We're talking, we're talking about, about practice. practice. Got it. <laughs> yeah yeah exactly thank you alan iverson for that amazing yes. um amazing so interview. Good. so yeah pretty much pretty much what we want to talk about is the reality that everybody wants to win when they go to the blind draw everybody wants to play well you know it's it's inherent you don't ever show up to the blind draw and you're like Man, I, you know, I don't care what happens, whatever. Like, you know, we all have that competitive yes. spirit. We want to win. And so, you know, what we want to talk about is what kind of habits did you create that you could carry into that night in order to be successful? Because the desire to win, um, you know, that's that's just not enough. It's just not enough. So we got to talk about how we can get better. No, that's exactly right. Um, it's not about uh, just showing up and taking home the cash. I mean, you really, this is something that you have got to uh, really work for. And uh, if something that you truly care about, it's something you're going to want to spend some time trying to get better at. So yeah, absolutely. You're absolutely right. You definitely have to um, put effort into succeeding at at events, whether it is blind draws, whether it's tournaments, uh, regionals, majors, any of those things, You, you need to put the work in. Yeah, no question about that. So the first topic I would like to discuss, Dad, is is a blind draw practice or, you know, is there value in practicing home? Um, You know, what do you think about a blind draw being, you know, considered practice for someone? I would say that a blind draw is a form of practice, um, but there are some caveats to that. 
I mean, I, I guess if you go to a blind draw every single night um, of the week and twice on the weekends and all of that good stuff, you could consider that your predominant form of practice. However, uh, I feel like there is a there is a caveat to it. Um, and I think that it is, you're not going to take as many chances when you've got money on the game. So you go to the blind draw, you put your money down, mm-hmm. and you're going to play some games. Yeah, you're, it's, it's going to be good experience, but you're probably not going to experiment with that new hand grip that you wanted to do or that new way of throwing where you, you know, maybe you backload the bag a little bit. Um, you're not, you're less likely to try an aggressive push in a situation or that roll bag you've been trying to get. Um, you're, you're way less likely to purposefully attempt to get better at these things when you've got skin in the game. So I think that, uh, yeah, blind draw is a form yeah. of practice, but it shouldn't be your only form of practice. That's right. That's right. You know, a, a blind draw partner is probably not going to be super excited to hear like, all right, dude, like I'm going to practice uh, getting my roll bag tonight in our games. Like I've never been able to do it, but, you know, really hoping that tonight I can get this roll down. It's like, <laughs> yeah. oh, man, like we're in for a long <laughs> yeah. night. Like, that's not... Partner's going to be like, I, I have a better so, idea. How about you don't? <laughs> yeah, yeah. How about don't insult my $10 yeah, like exactly. that, please? <laughs> no, but um, yeah. So, and then another thing about, about blind draws is there is a significant amount of time in between the games that you play, depending on the, the size of the blind draw and the amount of boards mm-hmm. there. And so um, you're just not going to be able to throw as many bags when you're playing in a blind draw as you would with no distractions at your house, um, throwing as many bags as you as possible, and so yeah, there's definitely a time and volume factor that goes into playing, uh, practicing at a blind draw versus practicing. Oh yeah, at absolutely. Home. And I know that like you know even at my local blind draw, where we have I think seven seven or eight boards set up sets of boards set up um, early in the draw, none of them are going to be open. We run, we run a beginner's and an advanced, and so all of our boards are full. So until you play your first game, you're sitting. Um, yeah. And then after you play your first game, somebody else is coming right up behind you. It's usually later in the evening when the boards even start to open up at all. So, yeah, you're absolutely right that um, you're, you're not going to have the opportunity to throw as many bags as you need to to really dial in, to really like hone that shot in and get better. At, a, at at the event itself. Yeah, for sure. I mean, the more you do anything, absolutely, you're going to get better at it. And if you only throw bags at blind draws, um, you will absolutely get better over time. But, you know, on this show, uh, we're trying to accelerate the process of getting better. And we want, we want the most efficient path to becoming the best cornhole players that we can be. So let's talk a little bit about focused practice, like deliberately focus practice versus just you know going through the motions you know everybody's mm-hmm. done it you know you, you finish up playing a game or you're at your house and you're just throwing bags and they're bouncing off the side of the board you know you don't care you're just you're just throwing 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 and um have you seen any benefits from you know switching your focus to deliberate practice versus just throwing around at the house yeah, absolutely. And um, just real quick to piggyback on the last topic, um, one thing you said to me on the phone that I, that I thought was really uh, profound, so to speak, is that blind draw is more um, a competitive simulation. Is that what you said? What, it was like competitive simulation yeah. versus Yeah, yeah, practice. absolutely. So it's, this is a, more of a competitive simulation, which I, I really like that, which is why I wanted to circle back on that. Um, but anyway, um, focus practice... Yes, focus practice is so important. Um, And I I feel like Mm -hmm. you have different styles of practice sessions. Some, you're just putting reps in. You're just getting the mechanics down. You're just, you're throwing bags, right? So you dump four, five, six Mm -hmm. sets of bags on the board and you just, you're just throwing. You're getting your mechanics down. You're watching your bag. You're seeing if the flight looks good. Is that flat? Is it wobbly? Is the bag kicking when it lands? Things like that, you know? Um, you're presenting the opportunity to throw, you know, you're going to have some blockers cause you're not going to make everyone in the hole. So you got opportunities for pushes or roll bags, airmail practice and stuff like that. So I, I feel like that's a very general style. Yep. 
And then you've got your more um, deliberate focus practice where you grab a set of bags and you just make the journey board to board. You're, you're, you've got four bags and you need to maximize what yep. you do with them. Um, I feel like Ghost is an invaluable tool when you're dealing with your, your concentrated mm-hmm. one set of bags because it puts, it puts that competitive Ghost on your shoulder. You know... If I'm playing Ghost 7 and I throw my first bag off the board, I've got to do something with these next three bags. I need to make all three of them if I want to, if I want to yep. escape with two points. And if I want to wash it, I've got to have you know two in and one on. So, I mean, there is, uh, there's, there's stakes, so to speak. And uh, I think anyone, you know, we, we, talk, we want to talk to the average players in this podcast. We want to talk to everybody in this podcast. But I think the average players are trying to get a lot out of what we what we say. You know, Go Seven mm-hmm. is an absolute. I can't even say the word because we. <laughs> but Go Seven will get you. You don't <laughs> think Go Seven is difficult? Play Go Seven. Go Seven will Absolutely. wreck your world and make you cry. So, it, you know, I, I suggest that if you're going to have concentrated practice, you're using one set of bags. Go ahead and and, and pull up Scoreholio app or pull up any sort of scoreboard app, and uh, and and, p- and play Go Seven to add a little bit of pressure to that concentrated practice. Yeah, for sure. Um, there's just we're all humans, um, and we kind of have a difficulty separating. Um, the reality of a situation. And if you're throwing with a bunch of bags, the reality is, you know, if I have 15, you know, bags all over my board, it's my sense of urgency and my sense of, you know, determination to do well and really, you know, really get the job done is just not there because I just have all these bags in reserve. Yeah. So, yeah, I think these playing strategies like Ghost, um, yeah, for those of you that don't know, Ghost is a, a, a practicing strategy where a computer or a, an invisible person next to you scores a certain amount of points every single round, and then you have to try to beat that person mm-hmm. doing that. And they are super consistent. Ghost never, Ghost always gets the um, the same amount of points every single round. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, it is crazy. There, you know, Ghost is really good. <laughs> um, absolutely. So, what about uh, playing against yourself? Like, have you ever? Have you ever stood on one side of the board with one set of bags, went to the other side of the board? Um, you know, it's kind of an interesting thing to do because you can kind of get in your lane. Mm-hmm. You know, you can get in the way of yourself on the other side of the board, and it can kind of simulate that real life game scenario. I have absolutely done that. Um, I've done it a couple of different ways, actually. I've done um, two sets of bags on either side of the board, or I've held two of each set of bags in my hand and just thrown them um, alternating. Um, from one side and then step over and then throw them alternating from the other side. So I could create a bunch of different looks for myself, you know, and, and, and yes, the objective is that whatever bag I'm throwing, I am actively trying to beat the other set of bags. So what, you know, if I, whatever set I'm yeah. throwing on this side, if I, if I lay a blocker, I'm really not trying to just push that blocker unless, I mean, unless I feel like it benefits me on the round I'm trying to sneak around it. I'm trying to roll it. I'm trying to airmail over it or something like that. Like I'm a, I'm, I'm trying to be as aggressive with myself as I can. Yeah. Because that's what, that's what I feel like that kind of practice is for, you know, is really trying to get better. And so, hey, I might, I might miss the airmail and give up, you know, four or five points on that round. But I also see that my strategy of the block with the other set of bags worked. So even though I, I lost with one set. I'm still winning with the other. So, I mean, you, you do get that positivity uh, out of this as well. So it's not totally discouraging when you do poorly. You know, if you're doing poorly because your other set of bags is is creating havoc, you know, that can be a good positive experience. For sure. Yeah, because, I mean, you know, that's somebody else right. at the blind draw. Like, you're making it tough for, for someone else. You're making right. it tough on yourself. So you know that you can do that to other people. Um, yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. Um, another another practicing strategy that I think is is really valuable is recording yourself. Um, if you you know set your phone up on something behind the boards and just watch yourself throw. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is you know this is a new sport, but every other sport does this. You know everybody watches film um, after their football mm-hmm. games. Everybody watches film after their basketball games, and we need to be watching film of ourselves when we're throwing. 
uh, bags. I mean, you will see things that you wouldn't believe that you do, um, that you just miss when you're throwing at a blind draw or whatever. It's like, man, do I really do that much, um, you know, movement with my arm yeah. or my elbow, or do I really do that with my leg mm-hmm. when I throw? And so you'll find out a lot about yourself just by recording yourself. I agree with that. I think that you're absolutely right. I think that's uh, an invaluable tool, actually. And I'm trying to get into the headspace of being more comfortable with, you know, possibly live streaming some of my my games and stuff, just so that it's it's there. You know, I've I've put it out, uh, and I've got access to that video on my Facebook feed or something like that. Because you're absolutely right. You you don't understand. Um, the full spectrum of what you're doing as a thrower until you can see yourself doing it from the outside. So filming yourself is invaluable. You know, like maybe there's something you're missing. If you film yourself from the back so that you can see what your grip looks like on your on the your back end. Are you keeping your arm uh, locked in a, in a straight position? Are you bent at the elbow and you push through? You know, there, there are things that you can look at and you can say, well... Yeah, I pulled that bag a little to the left, but it also looks like I did something weird with my hand when I was on the downswing or or whatever. So, I mean, yeah, absolutely. That that is a great tool, uh, and I would recommend that everybody do it. I'm not saying you've got to post it online or anything, but, um, yeah, definitely film yourself. Record yourself throwing some bags. I like to record in slow motion sometimes just so that I can get the full spectrum of my follow-through. So, yeah, excellent, excellent advice. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um Recording yourself is is an awesome thing to do. Um, another thing is, after you've recorded yourself, um, or even if, if, if you've just noticed that something's not working um, that you're doing, have the humility and have the humility and the awareness to realize that it's okay to make a change. Um, sometimes we get really married to the things we do because we're like, you know, I've thrown this way before. It works really well. I used to be, you know, really good. I'm kind of slumping now. I just, I just got to stick with it. And I, and I think it's true. You do need to stick with what works. If it ain't broke, absolutely don't fix it. But there's a lot to be learned um, from, you know, pros and high advanced players. Like if you watch people and it's like, okay, the best people in the world are throwing this way and I never see them do this, but I'm doing it and I'm not happy with where I'm at. Mm -hmm. I actually just did this recently. I just changed my throw. I've been working on uh, throwing with a butterfly grip and actually putting my my, um, front foot that I did have forward now is back. And so, and I just... I just needed to make the change because things were not going the direction Mm -hmm. I wanted them to. I watched a lot of players and I'm like, look, the best people in the world are doing this. My throw doesn't look anything like this. Let me Mm -hmm. try to emulate them. And I'm I'm really happy with the results. Oh, absolutely. I'm in the same boat, man. Um, Just recently, I went through a bad slump, about two months. I just wasn't throwing uh, like myself. I mean, again, you know, I'm not a... I'm not an advanced player or anything like that, but I'm pretty decent, you know, or have been pretty decent. And um, Mm -hmm. I went through a slump, man, where I started trying to pay attention. I was playing Ghost and I was following my PPR and I was, um, I was, I was struggling bad. My PPR was down in the fives. It was like, I couldn't, I I was, I was banging off the sides of the boards. I was front boarding. I was going long and these just weren't things that I was doing. And so I realized I had to take a break. I had to stop yeah. for a minute. I was throwing off the sides of the boards. I was front boarding. I just I couldn't seem to find it. Uh, tracking it through Ghost, through the Scoreholio app, I was seeing that my PPR was in the fives and sixes. And, you know, my highest at that point was averaging close to like mid eights, you know, and almost nine sometimes. And, um, but I, I just couldn't find it. I just could not get it together, and I had to do exactly what you said. You know, I had to stop. I took three weeks off. You know, I took three weeks off of of going to blind draw. Yeah. Sorry, and then I put more concentrated practice in, and I readjusted everything. I mean, I even went so far as to um, take on a Matt Guy style of throwing, where you know you hold the bag um, like a bucket yeah. and you just you throw it and uh, it was not flat but you know I've started to find a little bit of success with it so I, the more I was throwing it like that the more I started trying to tweak it I tried to see if I could incorporate um, the butterfly grip that I've always used uh, into it because 
one thing I've always had is a, is a, is a um, really flat bag. And I was very proud of that. So it was a, it was a prideful thing to not yeah. want to throw a bag that wasn't flat, you know? And I had yeah. to be like, look, I'd rather throw a duck and it go in the hole than throw a flat bag and ping it off the side. And that's just facts. I'd rather win games and be better than have a pretty bag. Well, it just so turned out that, you know, through concentrated practice over this time off that I took, I was able to find that butterfly grip, throw that flat bag, and progress and get better. So I feel like I kind of have kind of found my way back a little bit. And um, it took stopping. It took literally breaking down and saying, look, what I'm doing is not working. Um, and having to be mindful enough to yep. say, I've got to take it all the way back. We're going all the way back to the drawing board. Um, that's it. You know, we've got to do something. And, and so, yeah, you're right. Taking that step sometimes can be scary, especially if you're a player, you feel like you're, you're advancing and you're doing better and you're playing well and you're, you know, you're getting on the podium some and, and, uh, things are going well. And then all of a sudden, you know, you just tank and it's, it's just, it's hard. It's gutting. We've all been there. I know you guys have been there too. So, you know, sometimes you just have to reset and a reset will yep. fix it sometimes. Yeah. Resetting, look at yourself, you know, take a, take a deep dive into, you know, your soul <laughs> and, and figure out what's going on. Um, yeah. Sometimes you have to stop throwing bags all together. Sometimes you have to change your throw. I mean, you know, yeah, looking cool is great. Like <laughs> People that spin bags on their fingers and, and, you know, do all kinds of crazy, amazing stuff. Their bag is all backloaded. It looks mm -hmm. crazy. Um, it looks really, really cool. But at the end of the day, you know, you have to do whatever you can to throw bags in the hole. And so whatever that looks like for you, that, you know, that's what you need to do and you can refine from there. But yeah, there's no, there's no pride in, in looking cool in this sport. Yeah. It's, it's about throwing bags in the hole. Right. Exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> so... As far as um, as far as specific mm -hmm. shots go, you know, um, myself, I am, you know, I'm absolutely terrible at airmailing, and a reason that I'm terrible at airmailing is because I do not deliberately practice airmailing. And what I want to talk about now is getting the most bang for your buck when you are practicing. And the whole idea behind me not deliberately practicing airmails right now is because. I want to practice the thing that I'm going to need to do mm -hmm. the most, which is to slide bags into the hole. And so if I dedicate all of my practice to a shot that is the highest percentage in the game, it's like I'm dedicating all of my time, the most of my time, to the thing that I'm going to be doing the least, whereas I want to be focusing my efforts on de um, devoting most of my time to the things that I'm going to be doing the most. Mm -hmm. And this is why... Um, I don't deliberately practice airmails very much, um, you know, really difficult pushes and things. I think that they're all very important to set up and simulate, but if you're not able to throw tens or, or whatever, you know, whatever number you decide for yourself, if you can't do the basics well, then I don't think it benefits you very much to try to, you know, practice all these high percentage shots. What do you I think agree about that. that? I agree with that completely. Um, I feel like it's very important um, in the game of cornhole to put bags in the hole. And so, um, yeah, you want to be able to make sure you can score, you know, a proper, you know, a proper t percent of the time before you start worrying about, all right, well, I'm going to throw this, I'm going to throw this first bag blocker and then I'm going to just push and replace it or I'm going to airmail over it and do all this stuff, doing all this fancy stuff. Um, I think it's absolutely important and key yeah. that you can hit slide shots you know, you're going to have, you're going to have a far greater experience with open board than, you know, open board straight to the hole. Then you're going to have, you know, three or four bags in front of you and you need to airmail over it. I mean, that, that happens. Absolutely. That happens. But yep. it, um, it is definitely a lower percentage of the time. Yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah, all of these things, um, are crucial to practice if you want to get better. The only way you're going to get better at airmailing rolling, pushing, is practicing, airmailing, rolling, and pushing. And, you know, a huge benefit of practicing these things at home is there are absolutely no consequences, and you can throw 500 airmails if you mm -hmm. want, or set up bags in a line and practice your rolls and pushes and things like that. But, um, yeah, definitely super, super important to make sure that you have the basics down and, 
you know, the opportunity presents itself, someone throws a bag off to the left or whatever, I need to make sure that I can throw it straight mm-hmm. up the middle, use that bumper, yeah, and go stay in tight. the hole. Um, yeah, so that's really all I have. No, I agree that, with you but. completely. I mean, I, I feel like practicing those shots is important. Uh, I don't want to, I don't want to act like it's not, um, mm-hmm. but it should be a small percentage of your focus practice. You should be trying to throw bags in the hole the majority of the time and then maybe, you know, 15 minutes of your practice session at the end or not even every practice session. Like, okay, you know, one day, one day a week, I'm going to throw 500 air mails in a practice session. That's my whole practice session. Or I'm going to set up uh, bags across and block and I'm yeah. going to practice roll bags for 30 minutes on Friday or whatever. You know, it should definitely, it, it, practicing all facets of the game is really important. But at the end of the day, I feel like you need to be able to put bags in the hole. That's your, that's your goal. Man, that you, you may you bring a really good point up. Um, something I would like to maybe implement is creating like a practice schedule mm-hmm. where, yeah, a certain day I work on a certain shot, or you know, this is my airmail day. I go out and I throw Leg this day. many airmails. This is my slide <laughs> shot day. This is my yeah my ghost day. You know, because every other sport they do the same thing. You know, today's strength and conditioning. Today we're practicing blocking today we're we're Mm -hmm. doing agility drills and things like that it's like if you know anything about this game you know that there are so many small little intricate facets to the game and you know if if an opportunity presents itself for you to do something like an airmail or a you know a bully bag or some some of these more difficult shots you want to be able to do it and so yeah maybe that's something i'll do maybe i'll i'll create kind of a uh a schedule with dedicated days of different well, nice. types of practice. And if anybody's interested, you know, if that's something that you you think that you'd be interested in as a listener, um, let us know. Comment in the uh, put in the comments below, and you know, maybe Zach can uh, post his schedule uh, on the Facebook page or something like that. If it's something that you wanna um, you wanna see and maybe uh, you know mimic a little. Heck yeah, you know, forget about <laughs> leg day. Let's talk about roll day. <laughs> yes. You know. <laughs> that's right okay yeah. airmail, airmail wednesday, wednesday. or, or that's whatever right. monday is bully bag day let's go <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's right so um yeah dad if you don't have anything else about practice you know do you, do you have any any other points that you want to make before we kind of move on to outroing um no man i think that uh you know if i if i had to say anything just to kind of recap a little bit i just think practice is invaluable i know that as i sit here i don't practice as much as i'd like to yeah. uh especially right now you know it's the winter time and so currently we had a monsoon this morning so i mean my you know my pads in the backyard are just underwater <laughs> i mean terrible. i'm just not going to get out there i'm sorry some of you are that dedicated i am not that dedicated so um so I don't get to practice as much as I'd like to, but um, obviously when the weather's nice and, and warm, I try to get out and do, you know, at least I'd say 30, 45 minutes a day uh, of just focused practice like we talked about. You know, yeah. get out there and really have a have a point, have a purpose for what I'm doing, not just be like, hey, I'm going to go out and throw some bags in the backyard, um, which to be honest has its place. You know, some days maybe you don't feel like really putting a lot of mental uh, mental strength into what you're doing. But you still want to get out there and get the reps in. I feel like that's I feel like that's uh, perfectly acceptable, you know, to do. But I'm just saying I do try to practice with purpose. Mm-hmm. I feel like it's very important um, and um, just invaluable in the game if you're trying to grow and get better. Don't just count on one night a week at the blind draw because I promise you, it's it's just not enough. You just can't get better with only throwing that many bags in that short of a period of time. Yeah. For sure. It's all about getting mm-hmm. incrementally better every single day. I'm, I'm reading this book right now. Um, it's called Atomic Habits by James Clear. And he, he makes this really cool analogy where he's basically saying like if you're flying from um, Los Angeles to New York and they adjust the plane 1%, like so they adjust the nose of the plane 1%, which, which comes out to end, it's like seven and a half feet or something like that. By the time that that plane is supposed to be in New York, that seven and a half feet has adjusted it to where the plane is in Washington, D.C. now. These small changes, these small incremental changes are what create giant results later. Um, a lot of people think, um, especially around this time of year in, in January, yeah. New Year's, like New Year, New Me, 
Um, I'm going to throw a thousand bags a day. Like it's going to be amazing. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be a pro, mm -hmm. you know, this it's year. All of our resolutions. It's going to be awesome. But really, it's these tiny changes that lead to giant results. And so, um, yeah, that's what that's what we want to. That's what we kind of preach here on the show is we just want to have good habits, good consistent habits, because the tortoise beats the hare. Consistency over time is going to net extremely great results for all of you guys absolutely i agree with that completely yeah awesome well um dad it's been it's been awesome i love i love doing this every week um hopefully you guys found uh, some value in this video comment below and let us know you know topics that you'd like to hear about in the future yeah absolutely guys and just please like and subscribe if you enjoy the content uh it really helps out Comment if you have any topics you'd like us to touch on or is there any you know particular cornhole related thing that uh, maybe you've got questions about and you'd love to hear our opinions on. We'd love to hear it. But um, share the content. I mean, if you have you know friends in your circle, share it with your local cornhole group. I know that I make my local cornhole group listen to it, whether they want to or not. So just push it out. Push it out. Everybody's got a Facebook direct you know messages uh, of the, all the cornhole people in their area. So just share it. You know, we we want to get uh, out to as many listeners as possible. We feel like um, we've got something good going here, and um, I think that you know a lot of people can benefit from having just an average person's perspective on a game that we all. All love so until next time heck yeah see ya